Oh, hi, Stephen. I didn't see you there. It's uh, 20 Max for 2020. I'm just typing something here on this computer that's in my lap. It's like a, a Macintosh, but it's also portable. Yeah, it's portable. Let me... <sighs> oh, okay. Careful. Do we need to call somebody? Are you like, okay? You know, it's just a little... This is the Mac Portable. Apple's first. Uh, don't call it a laptop because you shouldn't mm -hmm. use it on your lap like I just did. It's a portable Mac. Uh, no compromises. Uh, except for all the uh, weight and size, which were horribly compromised. It is Apple's failed first foray into PowerBook territory. The PowerBook would replace it and do a much better job because it was much smaller and much lighter. And this thing's got a lead acid battery. So it's uh, super heavy, <laughs> and yeah. uh, the keyboard is really great. It's got a good keyboard. I'll give it that. Uh, the backlit uh, screen in some models later, but the first one didn't have a backlit screen. It was a good screen. It's a super twist display, so it didn't have any ghosting. It was, uh, right. you know, you, ghosting is you move the cursor and it leaves a little trail behind it. It's not good mm -hmm. on early laptop no. screens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this down now. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, so careful. Bend with your knees. Yeah, it's so it's huge. It's amazing Apple going from this to the first PowerBooks, right? Like it's radical difference. The portable, actually kind of like some of the other computers on the list, maybe including the 20th anniversary Mac, it is kind of a failed idea or failed product, but the idea was right. You know, having something where you could take your work with you uh, there's this great ad uh, early in the days of the Macintosh of somebody in like a preppy sweater with a in a bicycle with their like Macintosh in a bag in like on their bike. And that's not really portable. Like looking around a compact Mac is probably a nightmare, but we did it. <laughs> we did it. I had a little carrying case for my Mac SE. I mean, we definitely did it. Mm. The idea here was you didn't have to put in a case and the keyboard and pointing device came with it. But, um, you know, it's, it is port more portable than an SE. Only arguably, I would say. Only arguably. <laughs> only a little bit. Yeah, I haven't uh, spent much time with a, a portable. I don't have one in my collection. So uh -huh. when you I gotcha. bought this, I, gotcha. I, was, I was extremely jealous. Uh, you sent me the eBay listing and we looked at it together and, and you, then you pulled the trigger. It's my platinum. Um, I was going to say it was my, my white whale. It's more like my platinum beige snow white whale. Mm. But. Snow White, Snow White Whale. Oh, that's so good. Hey. Uh, yeah, it's it's so, weird, uh, and, and yeah. they mostly don't work. I don't think this one actually works. The battery goes bad. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, while I'm holding it, because I'm going to put it down so I don't pass out, but um, it has a full array of ports on the back, and, like, a huge, like, the huge SCSI port and the huge floppy port and the huge monitor port. And, like, this is... Um, one of the lessons that they learned from this computer is that you had to compromise. You couldn't do the Alp switch keyboard. You couldn't have the giant SCSI port. When the PowerBook shipped, they had a mini SCSI port that was much, much smaller so they could fit it behind a door. So they basically realized that while this was a complete Mac and that was great, it was too much and they needed to compromise. And that's the story of laptops, right? Is that you have to learn to compromise. And the story of the Mac Portable is that they didn't. A good pick, a weird pick, because I think a lot of people, like this is a, maybe not a super well-known Mac. There's not a lot of them out there, that's for sure. Uh, but it is cool. I like I like Macs that maybe point the way to the future, but don't quite reach it themselves. It's definitely one of the themes of this series is I'm looking for good Macs, but also bad Macs that are notable because they're bad right. or because they're weird. Because Apple never uh, sets out to build a, a bad Mac. Most of the time when Apple builds a bad Mac, which is not to say that they they haven't built a lot of boring Macs, but the bad Macs usually there's a story behind it, and usually the story is good intentions with some mistakes, and I think that's the story of the Mac Portable in a nutshell is that a lot of good intentions, but they were late to the party for luggables, and the world was already moving to laptops, and they missed the boat. the The good part of the story is that they got it right the next time with the PowerBook series, but the Mac Portable remains this unique document of a time at Apple where they were just a little bit behind the curve and hadn't figured out yet what people wanted from a portable Mac. They got it, you know, right the next time, but they didn't get it right this time. Good luck riding your bike to Starbucks with that computer in tow. Okay. I mean, it's, it's why put your computer in a briefcase when your computer is the briefcase or suitcase. Oh. 
it's part of my collection now. We'll 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 talk. We'll talk. Oh, okay. There's some negotiations yeah, behind the maybe. scenes. Maybe now that I got I've got something okay. that you don't have. It's very exciting to me personally. <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll move on to another another uh, computer next week. Another story from the history of the Mac. Uh, Stephen may compliment my selections, or he may complain about them. Uh, you never know what might happen. But that'll be next week. It's 20 Max for 2020. Bye, Stephen. Bye, Jason.